and uh, we're here at the Ninara Connect here in uh, Hong Kong. So what is Updin? Updin is a company that produces the SuperTai open source peer-to-peer -peer cloud software as one of its different products. We also produce a broadband router, which uh, is uh, able to do blockchain uh, generation and crypto mining. It's also an Internet of Things uh, gateway, as well as a NAS server. So it has a variety of different purposes. Uh, so uh, what do you do with the, co with the company? I'm the Chief Executive Officer. My name is John Maddal Call. I've been in the open source space for a very long time and programming computers for close to 50 years. And uh, so, like you say, you're doing a router. What, what's special about it? Well, first of all, let's talk about the software and what makes the software special. Um, a lot of people today use clouds, you know, whether it's Amazon Cloud or IBM Cloud or Google Cloud or any, any cloud. But the problem with most of these clouds is that they are run by some large company and they typically be, tend to be very centralized, which means that you have to send your data someplace to be in the cloud and then after a while you get your data out of the cloud. And this causes a lot of transmission over the internet. It causes some type of latencies typically. And it also means that there's a huge amount of data which is going to and from these clouds. A lot of people are also upset that these large vendors uh, may be under the jurisdiction of some other country. So for example, a lot of the vendors are under the jurisdiction of the United States. And if the United States really wants to get at your data, the United States can go to these companies and say, we have a subpoena for your data. You have to turn your data over to us. Um, this is more than just uh, whether they pay a fine or not. It means that if they ignore the court order, they could be held in contempt of court. They could actually go to jail. So this is one thing if you're inside the United States, if you're a United States citizen, you are subjective to United States laws and you're protected by the United States Constitution. However, if you're outside of the country, you're not protected by the United States Constitution and you may have a different set of laws that regard to your data. So for countries that are outside of the United States, this is a big thing. Um, we do peer-to-peer -peer cloud software, which means that any system could be a part of a cloud. You could have some systems that can give up resources, and you can have some systems that may need to buy those resources. And SuperTie allows you to buy and sell these resources amongst any systems you want to. Did you say Super? SuperTie. What is that? Well, SuperTie is the trademark of our products. Um, we named it after one of the fiercest warriors of Genghis Khan. Most of Genghis Khan's generals came up from nobility, and whether or not they were good generals didn't make any difference. They were noblemen, so they had to be a general. Subutai started off as a slave. He rose to the ranks using his own merit, and so, and he was one of the most uh, powerful and successful generals. He never lost a battle in war. So we name our software out of him because of respect for the meritocracy that he raised and because he was very successful at what he did. Uh, so the, the product is like software or is hardware or? The product is uh, open source peer-to-peer -peer software so that you can set up your own cloud. You don't need, you, it's, it, because it's open source, you don't have to pay us for it. Uh, if it's open source, you can uh, get fixes without us if you wanted to um, and and you know that is all free and it will always remain free now if you want to be able to buy and sell resources and you don't know where to buy them and sell them from we have a bazaar this is a, a piece of software that works on the internet it's kind of like the Apple Store or the Android Play Store where you can go to the store and see what resources and applications there are that people are selling and you can purchase those. 
And what we will do as a business model is ask for a very, very small amount of money from each one of these sales, just like the Apple Store and Google Store do. Um, so that's the software. And if you wanted to, you'd be able to license the uh, Hub software, or the Bizarre software from us, and you would be able to do your own business with that. And we would allow you to private label it so you wouldn't call it Supertie or Optin, anything. You would call it by your own name. And we're looking at large corporations like telephone companies or electric companies or large companies that have big server farms that may have extra resources that they want to sell or they may, have, uh, they may need to have resources of special types that they want to buy. And they would be able to private label this software uh, to, to sell to their customers or to let their customers use it. The final part of our SuperType product suite is a router, and we call it the um, blockchain router because number one, it's a router like any other router you might have in your house or business. It will you know, distribute your internet wirelessly or wired. It also allows you to set up a NAS server with RAID devices for storage. It also can act as an Internet of Things gateway by allowing you to attach an Arduino shield or Raspberry Pi connector and to run your Internet of Things uh, appliances and applications from the router itself. Now, one of the issues of doing that is whether or not there's some type of virus or there's some type of, of bad software that gets into your Internet of Things and perhaps generates a denial of service attack or some other type of malware and getting out to the network. So particularly the utility companies are terrified of this. They do not want something that is determined from inside of your house or your business to come into the grid. Likewise, they don't want something from the grid infecting your house or your business. That would be horrible also. So one of the things that we do in our router is inspect every single packet of data that goes into or out of the router using fuzzy logic to see if there's any viruses in there. Part of the problem with most virus software is that it doesn't work until you actually run it. By that time, it's too late. The virus is already in your system. We want to stop the virus before it has a chance to even get into your system. And we also constantly look at the operating system that's running and say, is it doing something strange? Is it having some type of activity that it normally doesn't have? And if it does, we can shut it down. So these are some of the things the router does. And the router does actually one more thing. It acts as a hardware wallet and crypto mining uh, processor. So we can actually mine cryptocurrency with the router. We use very small amount of electrical power above and beyond a router. It's an arm-powered router? Uh, it is powered by uh, a company from a uh, chip from Xilinx, which is an ARM partner. Uh, the chip has four 64-bit cores to it. It has two cores of real-time processor. It also has a trusted system processor. That's the one that inspects every single and packet. FPGA. And it has an FPGA. So you do the blockchain uh, uh, mining on the FPGA? Yes, we do the blockchain mining on the FPGA. And we see a great deal of efficiency in doing that. Much more efficient than if you used a GPU. Much more efficient than if you used a, the regular processor. How many people are using FPGAs for mining right now? Well, people know that it's efficient, maybe they don't know it yet. Well, actually, in the FPGA space, or in the, in the mining space right now, most people are using GPUs because that was a traditional way of doing it. Some people are starting to use ASICs. Now, an ASIC is a lot like an FPGA, but an ASIC is a specially built chip. And these chips are very expensive, but more than that, they're always fixed to one particular type of blockchain one particular type of cryptocurrency and that's all they do an fpga is a lot like an asic it uses much the same type of facility except it's programmable you can change what it does 
So if you want to mine a different type of cryptocurrency, or you say, I'm not into cryptocurrency right now, I want to use this FPGA for security purposes, or I want to use it for compressing videos, or I want to use it for a wide variety of other topics, you could do that. The ASIC is fixed to one thing. So we've decided to use the FPGA, and even though it may not be as efficient as an ASIC, you, the, the fact that you can change it to do different things, and it will do cryptocurrency mining without using a lot of electricity. So our entire router only uses about 18 watts of power. When you compare that to a GPU, that might be 1,000 watts of power or 2,000 watts of power. And granted, it can, the, the GPU can mine a lot of cryptocurrency. But on the other hand, it uses a huge amount of power, which in addition to just using the electricity, also creates heat problems. You always hear about uh, GPU miners, how they have to get rid of all the heat and stuff like that. These are all reasons why GPUs are really, really horrible for mining cryptocurrency. How much is the router going to be sold for? We're still negotiating that. We've, been, we've had some major breakthroughs which allow us to reduce the price of the router. But think about your cell phone. A lot of people get their cell phone from their carrier. Do they really worry about how much the cell phone costs? No. What that happens is the carrier gives them a cell phone and then over time they pay $10 a month or $20 a month towards their very nice cell phone and eventually they pay it off. That's why you have this two year uh, period on your, on your sign up. It's to allow the telephone company to charge you that money a long enough period of time to pay for the cell phone. It's the same thing with the router. So if you get your router from your, from your internet company, they would use it, you use it as a regular router, and over time it would be paid off as part of your internet uh, expenses. Now, the interesting thing is, what happens if you start mining cryptocurrency? Now, you have two business models with that. You have the telephone company or the electric company, whoever gives you the router, they say, oh, sign this contract and we are going to mine cryptocurrency and we are going to get money but this reduces your internet bill or this reduces your electric bill or they say you get to keep the cryptocurrency but this gives you money in your pocket which you can actually use to pay your telephone bill so these are ways that people who could not really afford good internet before can now afford good internet because the cryptocurrency mining could actually pay off their internet bill or pay off the cost of the router over time. So we, you know, we, are, we are looking for a model that might actually pay off the router in say five or six months of cryptocurrency mining. And then after that, the money that is mined goes towards paying your internet bill. And if you spread this all out, it might be that the person never has to pay any money for their internet, that it's all paid for by mining this cryptocurrency. So uh, is, is what you're developing, is that an open source cloud based on the Linux? It's open source cloud software. It runs on top of Linux, like a lot of cloud software works on, runs on top of Linux. But we also have it working on Windows as a client and Apple systems as a client. Uh, Linux is our main resource uh, client, or, or resource host, as we call it. Um, but there's no reason why this could not run on other systems also. And what does it do compared to like uh, Amazon Web Services or Google, Google Cloud or something like that? Is it something similar? It's a, lot, it's a lot similar, except for the fact that when you use these other services, all you ever do is buy resources from them. You can't sell them anything. They don't want to buy anything from you. They just want you to buy their services. With Supertai, you can set up a deal where maybe you buy some, some resources from one company and you sell your resources to other companies. Or you can split up where your resources are coming from. You buy certain types of resources from one company and other types of resources from another because they are the cheapest. So you can have more control over where you store your data, 
where you buy your data from, where you run your programs. These are all things that are more under your control. Does that mean you're building your own cloud? Yes. So you host, do you host cloud. it on your router at home or you, you, you just post, put it on a server that you like anybody can do that? Well, you could, you could, let's say you had a group of friends and they all had different systems in their house. You might say, well, you know, tonight I'm going to be running this program and it's going to be using a lot of CPU resources that I don't have. Hey, can I use some of your CPU resources from the system you have in your house? And they say, sure. And you then tell Supertie to go and make a connection to their server and then you can utilize those resources. Let's say you are a, a university and you have classrooms filled with computers that there's no student sitting behind because they're often on the classes and stuff like that. If you have supertized software stored on them, you can access all that, re all those resources, all those computing cycles, all that, and utilize that to do your work. So this could allow universities to cut down on the amount of services that they buy from cloud service <coughs> companies and by utilizing their own resources better. Can you have a little like 96 board type of server at home that runs it? Like an ARM, you can have little ARM things, or are you talking about some bigger cloud solutions? Well, it depends on the on the system you're running on. Um, the, typically, the 96 boards don't have as much RAM as would be useful in a server system. Um, so they would maybe more in the shape of a client that they would be reaching out and utilizing uh, the other cloud services. Of course, we do. Uh, ARM does have some server-oriented systems now that can handle more memory. So you might be able to make your, uh, your your host system one of those systems instead of an Intel system. It could be a Thunder X2 maybe, or an Ampere, the new Ampere, and uh, the Qualcomm maybe. Things things that typically would have more, more memory. But there's another thing in computer science that's coming out right now, and that's all these different strange uh, systems. Now, not to say strange, but for example, they have a nice export system here that does AI, artificial intelligence. Well, that's a very special chip. And, you know, you could create a host system where people could access that chip remotely and be able to use it without having to buy the board themselves. So if you had one of those chips on your system, you could say, yes, I can make this chip available to these people, and then they could use it without having to get one. This will allow people to develop applications without having to buy the processor first. Once the application is developed, they can then make the decision to buy the system and use it all the time. So, so you're the CEO, and how many people are in the, in the team? Do you have a, and where are they? Well, currently we have about 35 people in the company, um, and a lot of them are located in Bishkek. Uh, it's the, comp uh, uh, the city that is in, in uh, the old Soviet Union part of Russia. We have some people in Brazil that are working with us. Um, this, this software was actually developed as part of a contract with an agency that we dare not tell you who they are or else we would have to kill you. Um, so, and, and the agency wanted the software because they had one part of their agency that was very well funded, had lots of resources, and another part of the agency that was not well funded and didn't have a lot of resources. But the agency that did not have the resources was doing top secret work, and the agency that had the resources was doing secret work. And you can't allow the two agencies to get together like this. So Supertie was created to allow the top secret resource starved agency to reach out in an authenticated, secure, encrypted path to utilize the resources from the secret organization. And and you know, which is which is basically what a cloud is. A cloud allows you or should allow you to use your resources more efficiently. And this has been developed over the over a while now? Or when, 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 yes. when did you launch? Well, when did you, I mean, you, it's a new company, right? Well, it's a new company, but this project was started over five years ago. And 
they developed it under contract, and when the contract was satisfied, they asked the agency that we dare not say their name, uh, is it okay if we made it open source? And the agency said, of course, it's fine. So the last several years, uh, Alex Karasulu, who is our CTO and the founder of the company, was massaging this software to make it easier for people to install, to make it so it's more generalized for people, spreading it across different architectures, things like that. So in July of last year, uh, they reached out to me and said, would you become the CEO of our corporation? And I must admit that over the years, there's been many people who have asked me, would you become the CEO? Would you do, would you work with us? And I always held back because I felt that the work I was doing for open source in general was more important than being the CEO of a particular company. But when I saw this software, I realized that this was failing a very, very big need. And this was just too good of an opportunity to pass up. So I agreed to be the CEO. Now, let me tell you why I think this is so important. The internet was started back in 1969. And the reason it was started was to create this communications facility that was resilient to disaster. Atomic war, uh, volcanoes, hurricanes, that if something happens to a particular part of the internet, that the internet would be able to go around it and be able to continue to work. And that was one of the design factors of the internet. Um, people started creating distributed applications. But then what happened was Amazon came in and said, oh, we have this thing called the cloud. And in the middle of the applications and this, this, this internet, they created a centralized uh, cloud. And they broke the model. Because if something had happened to Amazon, that everybody that would be using it would be out of luck. My, my website is hosted on Amazon Web Services. It was down yesterday for like two hours. There's a fine example. Okay. And so, so what would happen, for example, if you said, you set it up with SuperTile, you say, I'm going to use, I'm going to use that server and this server and this server. And if, any one, if one server goes down, it automatically fails over to the other server. And that other server could be in a different part of the country using a different source of electricity, way away from volcanoes, way away from hurricanes, way away from snowstorms. And you, know, and you, can, you, can, mirror your, you can mirror your data so that when one of the systems goes down, when the main system goes down, the other ones take over. This is something you can set up, but if all of your data comes from one vendor called Amazon, then you're not in good shape. So there was or one Google. of them, or Google, or, um, or Microsoft, or Microsoft, and there was one of the vendors, I won't say which one, who was giving a talk today, and they kept talking about how they were trying to get away from just one vendor of hardware because that was very dangerous if that one vendor of the hardware was to have some type of problem. And I was thinking, well, what happens if one, pro one provider of your cloud has problems, right? And he didn't see the irony of his statement that, that people should not depend upon one architecture uh, for the provision of their hardware, but it was okay to, 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 to have one um, software vendor provide their cloud. And the thing with SuperTie being open source is if something did happen to Optin, then the community could keep the software alive, right? The community could take over. Um, if something happened to one of our little bazaars, that's licensed out, it's federated, that would still keep going, but you don't need it. In fact, we, we, we publish our APIs for the bazaar, so you could create your own if you wanted to. Uh, the same thing with the router. The router's design is up on GitHub. People can look at it, they can see how we put it together. The software for the, for the running the router will be open source. We're looking at using open word as a, as a basis of it. So, you know, we believe in the open source model. And uh, 
Alex Karasulu, the, the CTO and founder, has worked for the Apache Foundation for a very long time. He's done a lot of the very difficult things that are necessary for uh, the Apache web servers to work. Um, and Sally Kadari is our marketing manager. She has actually done a lot of work for the W3C Foundation, for the Apache Foundation. So all of us believe very strongly in open source, open processes, or things like that. So this is a peer-to-peer -peer cloud to stay, uh, to stay forever. And, uh, and what's the system for if I want to provide some, uh, some, some, some processing power, some storage, some bandwidth? Do I just click something and add it to the system and you verify it's real or then you take commission or how does it work? Well, there's many questions there. Uh, the first thing you would do is you would install the SuperTie software on the machines that you want to have either as a host or a client. Then once that's installed, you then set it up so that you say, these are the resources that are on my machine and these are the, this is how much I want to charge for these resources. Now, we use a digital currency called Goodwill. It's not really a blockchain-based currency, although we do use the blockchain uh, to keep track of things overall, because the blockchain is a little bit heavyweight. Um, if you're using the blockchain to just buy like 10 seconds of CPU time, it might take 20 seconds to update the blockchain to take account of your 10 seconds of CPU time, and that's just not practical. So we have this very lightweight uh, digital currency called Goodwill. And if you sell resources, you get Goodwill. If you buy resources, you use Goodwill. And there's other ways of generating Goodwill. You can write what we call blueprints, which uh, allow applications to run in a, in a Supatai cloud. You can tell other people to use Supatai. You get some Goodwill for that. Even just installing SuperTie gets you a certain amount of goodwill. So this is this little digital currency. And then we're going to have our own cryptocurrency, which is called Khan. And which Khan, is called? Khan. Khan. Like, like Genghis Khan. Ah, okay. Khan is actually the word for king. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we're going to have our own cryptocurrency. And... That you could either buy with a fiat currency like dollars, or you could get uh, use Ethereum currencies, or you know to, to buy Con, and then you use Con to buy goodwill if you do, if you need some, or you use Con to buy say the routers. We want the Con to be a utility currency, just like you use it, just like you use a dollar bill. Only the beauty of using cryptocurrency is if I want to buy something from somebody in Russia. I could just send them the cryptocurrency through the mail and boom, it goes to their wallet and they send me the stuff that I bought, right? It's, it would, it, it's an accelerator of the economy. And for the people that are really serious about cryptocurrencies, this is the way we think about it. We don't think about the fact of, oh, I, I buy a Bitcoin today and it's worth $10,000 tomorrow. No, it's more about having generating a new economic model that gets around all the horribleness of paper currency, metal currency, whatever. And that's what we want to do. 